sorry. Maybe I've been in Halki a bit long. And hurried is slightly too urgent a word for this place, where excitement is the last chapter of the Ian Rankin novel. It's fantastic. a car in Halki, you can't get a British newspaper, there are no water sports and no bank. And what I love is that there's only one taxi on the island. If that fills you with dread, then don't worry, because Falaraki is only a short ferry ride away. But if that appeals to you, then come with me. You walk out of the town of Emborius, along and up the Tarpon Springs Boulevard, named after the Florida town where many ex hockey families now live. You very quickly find yourself up on high and looking down on the harbour. All alone, apart from one man and his donkey. After the fall of the Byzantine Empire, the island of Haki was often raided by pirates. And so this place, Horio, became the inland capital. 200 years ago, 3,000 people lived there. But it was only until recently, 40 years ago in fact, that the last local people left. After passing Horio, it's then a long and winding two-hour walk to the monastery. Take plenty of water, but there's really no need for a map, as there is only one road on the island. The walk to the monastery of St. John is up. Well, let's be honest, it's very up, but as you can see, it's a charming little place and well worth the effort. Now, if you don't have enough in the tank for the journey down, then don't worry, because sometimes you can arrange to stay in one of the old monk cells. These days, of course, the monks aren't included. The caretaker, Dimitri, will sell you a can of Coke and will be happy to chat away in Greek to you. There's also a lovely little chapel that will delay the long walk back for a few minutes. Before you arrive back in Emborios, you'll be wanting to stop off at Padamas Beach. And what better way to wash off a day's walking than with a dip in the Aegean? Haki is still an island of fishermen and the boats come in between 8.30 and 10 o'clock. The fishermen will weigh your choice and charge you the going rate, although that may not be cheap. They won't scale and gut it though. That's up to you, I'm afraid. But if you want to do something slightly less daunting, then you can always come to Dimitri's. He's a local baker, the only one on the island, and he does a roaring trade. Now, he's a pie lover's dream, but a weight watcher's nightmare. You name it, he's got it. He's got your cheese pies, your spinach pies, your sausage pies, your ham and cheese pies. He's even got your good old-fashioned custard pie. Calimera. 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 How, how are you doing today? Hi. You good? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So what do you reckon? Two cheese pies? If I take two cheese pies and two spinach pies? Yes, okay. That will do me. <laughs> so I sneaked in a custard pie as well. Hey, I'm on holiday. Thank you. Four fifty, please. Ooh, not bad. Okay. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. If it all gets a little bit too hectic and overcrowded in Halki, then you could take a boat trip to the unpopulated island of Alimnia. The boat trip to Alimnia could be the first time you realise there were that many people in Halki, and it's a great chance to meet up for a chat while someone else cooks and serves you lunch.
It allows people to live on the Limnia left in the 1960s, and before that, it was used to shelter Italian submarines during World War II. Apart from that, there's not much else to say about the island, except that it's a great place to come and eat your picnic. You have to have a good appetite for this trip. After a quick nap, it's a bit of unambitious snorkeling to finish off the day's activities and my all too brief stay in Halki. So, Halki, what do I think? Well, I think its character probably hasn't changed in 50 years. I think it's completely unspoiled by modern tourism. And if you're looking for a quiet, restful, typically Greek holiday, then this is definitely for you.